Are you looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this football and basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projections for a wide variety of stats, and place your entry. It's as easy as that. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $250 with just a few taps. Easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and injury insurance on your picks are what makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Ready to test your skills? Join the Prize Picks community of more than 7 million players who have already signed up. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash bluewire and use code bluewire. That's code bluewire at prizepicks.com slash bluewire for a first deposit match of up to $100. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Today's episode is brought to you by cars.com. With over 2 million vehicles and 50,000 more added every day, cars.com will match you with the perfect car for you, your budget, your life, your style. And if you're ready to say goodbye to your current car, cars.com will get you an instant offer to cash it in. Just start by entering your license plate and get matched with a local dealer who will write you the check. So whether you're looking to buy or sell, just go to cars.com. It's magical. Good morning, friends. This is Kirk Henderson, Editor-in-Chief of MavsMoneyBall.com. It is Monday, May 30th, and if you're in the United States, you are likely celebrating Memorial Day, which is a day in which we give thanks to those in the armed services who have given their lives uh, so that we could continue to enjoy our freedom. If you're around the world, then you are just enjoying a Monday. Uh, the first thing I wanted to get off and, and do is uh, let my good friends, uh, Bibbs and uh, Mind of Reese, so Reese uh, over at Mavs Outsiders, congratulate them on their 100th episode, which it's not up yet, but I know they're recording it. I'm going to post the link into their show notes. If you're unfamiliar with their show, they run the Mavs Outsiders podcast. Uh, I have been on the internet for so long that I, at one point or another, wrote for a website called Mavs Outsiders. But these two gentlemen live outside the Dallas area. They both really uh, appreciate the Mavs and really, I, I just, I like them. They are fans, they are friends, they work hard, and I wanted to, you know, give them some flowers and say thank you for making 100 episodes of Mavs content. So please go give them a uh, a listen if it's if it's within your capacity, and tell them I sent you. The next thing I wanted to let you guys know about was, uh, depending on when you're listening to this, at uh, 9 a.m. on Monday, the Mavs and Moneyball website is posting a really long story from a uh, reader and writer. Her name is Marcy, who wrote a a great recap of the Mavs season and it's the sort of Mavs love letter the sort of thing that I just you know it's why I got into writing you know this may shock many people who listen to this website who listen to this podcast but I wasn't always bitter <laughs> I I do love this team and it, it was the sort of piece of writing that that you know kept me sane in the mid 2000s uh, whenever I was struggling to find Mavs related content at all this is somebody who watched the team, who appreciates the team, and I just, you know, we're running it on Mavs Moneyball today because I really thought it was a great piece. So yeah, go over there and read that. It's not in the show notes just yet because I'm recording this very early in the morning, but that's the nature of things. Um, the next fun thing that I'm going to link to was on the uh, NBA Reddit um, or subreddit, there was an incredible, <laughs> just like, this is a statement of fact. It's going to piss people off, but who cares? Um, this is from Meet Me at O Block, and, and the, the, the post was, Luca has f already faced as many first and second team all NBA players in just three postseasons as LeBron did in the East when he made eight straight finals from 2011 to 2018. Our expectations too high for Luca, and then he sources a bunch of, of of just statements of fact here. So 2020, Kawhi Leonard was on the second team. 2021, Kawhi Leonard was all on the All NBA first team. In 2022, Devin Booker was a first team player. Steph Curry was a second team player. During LeBron's 
eight years of final run. He pl- in 2011 he faced Derrick Rose, who was a All NBA first team. That was the only first teamer that he faced in that run in 2015. So for you know three seasons in between, he f- he faced Pau Gasol, who was the second teamer, um, and then who and he also missed two and a half of the six games against the Cavs. And then in 2017, uh, Isaiah Thomas, who was a second teamer. Um, and then in 2018, DeMar DeRozan, who was a second teamer. Don't really have a lot of comments on this because sometimes, like how you get to the finals, it is still a finals thing. I will say that the Eastern Conference has largely been the worst conference the entire time I've been a fan of basketball. And some of it uh, is like a self-perpetuating thing where Eastern Conference general managers are terrible paired with bad lottery luck. I mean, look at what, you know, look at what happened. Like the, the magic at the number one overall pick, one of the more ambivalent drafts of the last 10 years. So it is what it is. Okay, so at some point uh, later today, I'm going to record a, co- uh, a podcast with Matt Phillips where we're going to talk a little bit more about the exit interviews. If you haven't gone to see the exit interviews, the Mavericks YouTube page posts the whole thing of every single person who gave one. And, you know, they're, it's like two hours of content. They're, some of the stuff is not exactly good, but I really did enjoy uh, Nico Harrison's, for example. And he had a, like, someone gave him a question about Luca, just sort of as a tease. And Harrison said, I knew he was really good, but he's next level. He's special. The way he can manipulate the game, the way he sees things three or four steps ahead of other people. I knew he was really, he was amazing, but I didn't realize he was, like, really, really amazing. So, again, these sorts of things are a little off the cuff. Everybody's in a good mood during the exit interviews because the Mavericks made the conference finals. And I understand some fans are probably pretty disappointed that the Mavericks didn't make the finals because they're playing a Boston Celtics team, which can't seem to get out of its own. Or um, I'm sorry, the Warriors are playing now a Boston Celtics team, which can't seem to get out of its own way. But I don't know. I'm very pleased with what the Mavericks did. I'm looking forward to seeing what they can do next. Um, but anyways, these exit interviews, Matt Phillips and I are hopefully going to talk about them at some point today. Um, and then that'll be in your feed a little later this afternoon. Uh, but I, I liked, I just liked where, where these, these things were going. So then, um, the Twitter account at Mavs Muse posted a top 25 Mavericks dunks of the past decade. And number one, I, I need to be clear, like this was really, really fun. I don't want to take away from how fun it actually is. But what it actually... <laughs> Once you move past the highlights, and I'm just I'm going to post this in the show notes, and I'm going to recommend that every one of you go look at it because it's 25 of them, and some of them are really fun. But here's what it really says to me. Over the last decade, the Dallas Mavericks haven't had that many athletic players. Now... The one you're thinking of that got wiped off the map was Richard Jefferson. It was called, um, it might have been called Travel. Where was it here? But it was it was it was ruled as as one that the Mavericks could not use, which was pretty dang annoying. Um, that said, uh, what was it here? Uh, honorable mention: Richard Jefferson getting robbed of a poster against Charlotte. That's easily the best dunk of the past ten years, but it doesn't count. What it says to me is that the Mavericks need more athletic players. Like, (laughs) the number of non-athletic guys that are featured in this top 25 thread is absolutely hilarious. Um, There's likely to be... I don't know. We have a... Oh, yeah. We have a Spencer Denwitty post uh, up on MavsMoneyBall.com about... um, Like I said, Spencer Denwitty, Doyle Raider's been working on it for a few days. I really enjoyed it. Um... Let's see here. Trying to think if there's anything else. Well, you know, this has been a fun month. I've I've enjoyed watching basketball, all things considered. Um, you know, let me know what you think. I'm going to try to do probably a Spotify Live at some point on Tuesday, uh, which will go up on Wednesday, of course. But, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for hanging out. I hope you enjoy your day off. If you're stateside, if you're around the world, thanks for listening to the show, and we will talk to you soon. Go Mavs.